Ask Firebase. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Firebase. My name is Doug Stevenson, coding Doug on Twitter, and fun fact about me, I'm not wearing any pants under here. It's a little breezy. For those of you who haven't seen this show before, you ask the questions and I give the answers, and hopefully one of them will be right. So without further ado, let's get to the first question. This question comes from Doc Wheeler on YouTube. Hey there. Hey there, back at you, Doc. Can Google Analytics for Firebase be used during development? I'd like to show stakeholders what the analytics for the mobile app would look like. Doc, I have two things to say about that. First, tell them to put down the stakes. It's not very sanitary. Second thing is, you've probably noticed that Google Analytics for Firebase in the console doesn't look very exciting if you only have a couple of users. You can use it during development, but it's just not gonna give you a very accurate view of how your development users are actually using your app. Instead, why don't you send them to the Firebase console? There's a demo app there that has very rich analytics. It comes from a game called Flood It. You can download that from the market. You can also watch a brief presentation I gave about that at the Firebase Summit in Berlin. The link to that is in the description below. But when you go to the console, there's a box there with a plus sign on it that you use to create a project just below that there's a box that says explore a demo app. Click that, that will take you to the Firebase console where you can see all the rich analytics from Floodit. There's thousands of users who are using it. It's really cool to look at. Send your stakeholders there, but only after they wash their hands. Thanks for the question, Doc. Next question. This next question comes from Mike on the Firebase Slack. How do I write code that observes security roles when using the admin SDK? I'll tell you why he's asking this. Normally, when you initialize the admin SDK, you do so with admin privileges, which means you get full read and write access throughout the database, regardless of any security rules or validation rules that might be in place. What Mike wants to do is he wants to use the admin SDK to do writes that observe those rules. So if, if a write would trigger a, uh, a violation of a security rule, that should fail. And it turns out you can do this if you initialize the admin SDK with the database auth variable override property in the initialization object. That's a lot of words. But the result of that is if you give it a user ID to simulate, that user ID will then essentially be simulated for all the read and write. So at that point, if you trigger a security rule that would cause the write to fail, it will fail and you'll know. And so that's what you can do to make sure the admin SDK observes security rules. Great question. Oh, if you haven't seen the Firebase Slack, sign up for that today. If you go to firebase.community, that's a weird URL, but you can type it in your browser. Do that, you can sign up for the Firebase Slack and you can chat with lots of people who are using Firebase and even some of the staffers. It's a lot of fun, check it out, I'll see you there. Next question. So addictive. This next question comes from Martin on Stack Overflow. Is there a way to perform a transaction when writing data to real-time database with the REST API? Now this is a great question because up until recently, there was no way to do that. So let's unpack this a little bit more. In real-time database, a transaction is necessary to prevent two clients from clobbering each other's data if they both want to write it at the same time. We obviously need a way to prevent that. The way real-time database handles it is it gives you a transaction mechanism to allow the clients to go back and forth with the server to negotiate what the value should be at the end of the transaction. You might use this if you were, say, incrementing a counter. You have two clients that want to increment, but they need to do it in a certain order. So the transaction transaction will help prevent both clients from incrementing incorrectly. So that's a transaction, but you couldn't do that with the REST API in the past. But as of today, now you can do transactions with the REST API. As you know, REST API goes over HTTP, and this new feature allows you to use the e-tag header of the HTTP request to go back and forth with the server to manage what the correct value should be. Go read the blog post on that. The link is in the description below. It should come pretty handy if you're a user of the REST API. Great question, thanks Martin. Next question. This next question comes from Alexander on YouTube. And Alexander asks, is there a Kotlin API for Cloud Functions? The answer is, Kind of. As you know, Kotlin is a language that you use to build Android apps and maybe server apps as well. It compiles down to bytecode normally, but it turns out Kotlin also compiles down to JavaScript. As you know, JavaScript is a language that you can use to build cloud functions. And if you can use Kotlin to build JavaScript and JavaScript can be used to build a cloud functions, it stands to reason you could use Kotlin to build cloud functions. You can totally do this. I played with it earlier, it works, but it's not exactly the most pleasing experience. It turns out you need this extra tooling in place to do this transpiling 
styling of Kotlin to JavaScript, which is, you know, extra work, extra maintenance. Also, you end up writing what amounts to code that looks exactly like JavaScript, it's just in a Kotlin file, which there's not a whole lot of advantage to doing that. So what I recommend instead is using an editor like VS Code, which is JavaScript aware. Many of us here on the Firebase channel on YouTube use VS Code for our JavaScript presentations. You'll notice it has fun things like autocompletion and code help. So it's very JavaScript aware, very smart, it's a blast. That's what I recommend you use instead of Kotlin for now. <laughs> Great question. Thanks for the question. This next question comes from Demej on YouTube. Where can I get a Firebase shirt? And a lot of people ask this question, especially when I post pictures of the shirts that we're giving away at various events. So we have a blue shirt like this one or a black shirt, both very fun, very comfortable. To get a shirt, you will have to go to one of the events that Firebase sponsors or that we speak at. If you wanna know what events are coming up, follow us on Twitter, we'll let you know what's coming up. Thanks for the question, Demej. Time for the next question. This next question comes from Agus on YouTube. Hi, Firebase, Smiley. Hi, Agus. I'm building an Android app with Firebase, and I want to send a notification to the app when something changes in the database. How can I build that? It turns out you can do this with cloud functions for Firebase. What you do is you write a database trigger, and you specify in that database trigger the location of the database that when it changes, should trigger your function. And then after that, you can use the admin SDK to send the notification. It's actually pretty easy and it's very commonly requested. In fact, it's so common that we've actually written some sample code for you to get started. There's a link to GitHub in the description below that will take you right to a sample project. So get started with that. Great question, Agus, thank you. This is so much fun. I can't put it down. It's so hard to put down. I'm gonna put it down right. I, just, I, need, to, I need to get it out of my hands. I need to put it down. Like, <laughs> All right, this next question comes from Amr, also on YouTube. Amr asks, could you please explain phone number authentication in a video? I'd be happy to do that, Amr, except it's already been done by my pal, Lawrence Maroney. Lawrence, you're my pal, right? You're my buddy? Awesome, I'll high five you later. Lawrence has done a number of videos right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube that describe how to get phone number authentication up and running in your app, web, Android, iOS, it's all there. Watch those videos, let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for the question, Amr. Take it easy. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to keep sending in your questions with hashtag AskFirebase. You might also be interested in my other show called Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. Follow it all right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Now I'm gonna keep playing with this fidget spinner.